Mr. Tulsi, and now to you. A bunch of uh, sm uh, small cap stocks are doing reasonably well. In fact, the mid cap stocks. Uh, any specific gainers that you would say would, for the larger, uh, for the longer term? I think Lata, I'll take this as a you know uh, uh, benefits you know uh, accruing to the investors or maybe traders over a longer period of time. Confining myself more on the auto, auto ancillary infrastructure and maybe banking finance. These are some of the sectors which are largely going to get benefits. And in fact, if we, the, the best part is that we have started this month or the budget has been presented on the first day of the new series when the whole market has been sitting quite light. So I think technical factors has also been helping to have the, because there has been definitely positive indications coming in from the budget. I don't want to again go into the details of all those which we have already narrated. So that, that definitely gives the confidence because we had some fears in on account of fiscal deficit increase in service tax or increase in the corporate tax also. So overall, and the, but, but the best part about the budget, I will see that government has not cut on the social allocations, whether you talk of health, education, Narega, rural development and all that, which will keep the income flowing in the hands of the rural population, which eventually will lead to the consumption and then in turn the growth. And so with all these things, I think you will have the positive e effect of that coming in, especially with the comfort, you know, giving or uh, coming to the overseas investors. And mm -hmm. if they take a lead or if they take a positive view on the market, I think the local investors or the traders will just follow them. Yeah. I'm going to get to Nagnath on this as well. But Mr. Tulsian, you track the oil space very carefully. How have you read the impact of this crude import duty hike that's happened married in with the pi price hike that's come for them? Mithali, I don't think that this there will be any ease on account of the uh, you know the burden on the on account of the marketing to the oil marketing companies because this is just a value accretion to the government whatever increase which we will be seeing in the in the in the petro product prices will be the income but I don't think that that will really curtail the subsidy or the loss or the marketing losses of the oil marketing companies they'll keep depending on the subsidy uh, contribution either from the upstream or from the government but I think the finance minister has hinted that there won't be any subsidy payment in the form of the oil bonds. So partly that has been, you know, or, or will eventually get recouped by the increased uh, revenue in the form of the increase in custom duty as well as uh, excise duty. So there, mm -hmm. there won't be any relief, honestly, I see for the oil marketing companies. They'll continue to struggle the way they have been all along, you know, on account of the under recovery. Nagna, this is a tricky one to gauge because on the one hand, uh, at least they've you know, gone through with two retail price hikes on petrol and diesel. On the other one would wonder whether the government is dilly-dallying on any of the larger PARIC committee recommendations and doing the easier thing, which is getting some of these price hikes through. Well, I don't think there is any need to jump to conclusions right now because as the finance minister himself mentioned in his speech, I think they're going to mull over the recommendations in due course. So I think it's better to wait and see what the finality is in terms of those recommendations rather than just judging the impact on the OMCs based on today's uh, you know, increase in prices and so on and so forth. Uh, Nagat, one, one final question to you. You know, uh, the GDP numbers that came today showed a fairly dismal growth in consumer expenditure. It went up by barely 3% compared to over 5.6% in the previous quarter. Added to that in the budget, the total expenditure of the government has gone up by just 8.6%. And if you compare it to, say, a long-term, uh, you know, a, a decadal comparison, this is the lowest ever increase in expenditure. Aside from the fact that they may not be able to keep it, uh, you know, this flow of funds to social sector that we are touting perhaps uh, is not true. I mean, at least the rate at which uh, the flow of resources went in previous budgets may not be kept up in this budget. Uh, so do you think that consumption really goes up uh, just because of that little bit of tax giveaway? Now, again, it would be uh, not right to prejudge. I think one needs to look at the constituents of that expenditure, uh, what we are having in front of us, I guess, is just the broad number. Uh, but, you know, I think from a stock market point of view, India is seen as a consumption-driven economy. I don't see anything in this budget that is going to change that opinion on the part of either domestic investors or foreign investors. The thrust on social development, uh, increase in NREGA allocations, and many other initiatives, I think, will contribute to the balanced growth that the finance minister referred to, which I think in the long term lays the framework for a very strong consumption-driven economy that continues to deliver excellent growth uh, no matter what the external factors are from a macro point of view. I think that is what investors are looking at from a medium to long-term point of view. Mm.
Mr. Gaur, you straddle many businesses and there's an expectation that this hike in MAT will go down quite negatively for infrastructure developers. How have you read it? <laughs> well, the fact is that uh, the fact is that uh, MAT is uh, uh, as one of the speaker also mentioned it was meant to tax the companies who were giving dividend but not paying the taxes and for investment vehicles especially uh, as you know that a uh, lot of power projects lot of infrastructure projects uh, government uh, incentivized and uh, there are certain reliefs which were to be provided but uh, this increase in mat is bit of a if i can say surprise for everybody but uh, i can tell you that uh, some of the power purchase agreements with the scbs we have uh, they do provide the hedge uh, for such increase so well at this 3 percent increase could have been avoided in my opinion but as such we are not affected with this thanks mr gaur we so appreciate you taking the time out to speak with us today that is uh, manoj gaur of jp associates they watch and cover many influential sectors so it's important to see what their reaction is to many of these taxation changes kaushik uh, what did you make of the GST rollout date? It's important for you guys as well. What did you make of it? Well, I think um, I would say that I was hoping to get more clarity in both the GST and the direct tax code um, because it is traditionally a, a, a budget would have tax pronouncements. A direction on the DTC was important. There was an uh, expectation though, Kaushik, that there were too many anomalies in the DTC and that may actually get pushed back. But it seems now that and GST are running parallel. Yeah, so the date has not changed. <laughs> and, the, and the points have been highlighted over the last um, you know, six months. The ministry is well aware. The, there has been a lot of consultation process. I think there were nine items which was identified by the minister himself. So I think clarity or a, or a kind of a, um, announcement on that regard that these are the nine items which we've been acknowledged and this is our in principle view. If that, even that was there, then I think the, the country would have got more clarity as far as the direction of the implementation of GST as well as for DTC. So I, I think if you, if you want to pick negatives out of this, I think that kind of clarity is something I, think, I guess everybody was hoping for. I know this is not uh, uh, entirely under your domain, but a Tata Bank looks very much likely now since uh, banking licenses are coming. Well, I'm not qualified to talk about it. If you, I can say steel is not going to bank. That's a bad <laughs> That's a relief. <laughs> Especially after last forum. But I'm glad to hear that. Well, Mr. Kanaba, you were telling us about other benefits that for a corporate. Uh, just let me uh, pick on to the point which you asked uh, Kaushik about uh, GST rollout. In fact, I must say that uh, the fact that the finance minister chose not to take an interim year date and really put it back by a year is really very welcome because until now it has been the steady representation to the finance minister that GST rollout is not merely a question of intention. It's not merely a question of getting an agreement among the state finance ministers. It's a question of building an IT infrastructure. And for me, one of the very important takeaways was this uh, uh, setting up of this technology group under Mr. Nandan Nilkani to allow the government really to put the IT infrastructure both for direct and indirect taxes. If this gets going, only then do we have a real hope of implementing GST by 1st April. So one would have wished it happened earlier, but it could have happened in a very haphazard and a half-hearted manner. So that's one thing. But one needs to really see, as Kaushik mentioned, a roadmap as to what's going to happen in this one year. One only hopes that it's not that six months later, people start waiting and waking up. Uh, on the other front, on 1st April 2011 for DTC, that was the really stated date from day one. So GST has been pushed back, but DTC, the rollout is on course. Uh, from what I understand from my interaction with the government is that a new code, sort of a new uh, amendment to the code as it has been presented sure. thus far will be put up. Maybe it will get referred to a select committee and thereafter the new code will develop. So again, I think that's, that's on course. That's a very welcome step. Thanks, gentlemen, all of you for your time today. Let's take a